Hey guys, let's talk about fully mocking API E2E calls. So let's say you're using Cypress, you're testing your web application, you can fully stop out the network using Cypress Intercept, but there's no way of doing the same thing when you're using Cypress Request or Cypress API. So here we're looking at a public endpoint provided by K6. So they showcase it for their load test. It's my favorite load testing tool. I thought, okay, maybe I create like a whole end Cypress repository with it. And then I try to mock API E2E using this tool called Macoon, which I'm really liking. So I created a full repo. It's an open public repository. You can take a look later. And it's creating Crocodile, you know, editing it, um, then patching it, and logging in with this user that spins up from scratch. I have plenty of usage of a data session, so we're not back-to-back -back creating the same user again and again uh, when we're creating these things. I uh, have a test that isolate simple login and then do like a data session login using SiteSpark, um, using Cypress Map, all from Qued. Here we get the token, and we get all the crocodiles, we make sure there's one. We do our assertion on the crocodile that we created, and then we edit it, we do that patching, and finally we delete it, we get all the crocodiles and ensure it's not there. Right? Simple Qued tweet. And let's look at another favorite tool of mine, so I like REST client a lot. It's a VS Code extension because not only you can save these calls, but also it's nice documentation for your API. Right? So if I hit the public endpoints, for instance, I'll get eight crocodiles and I can send requests through all these and they work the same as a Cypress e 2 test. So usually what I do is I first write the REST file like this and then uh, I do the Cypress E2E test. Anyway, let's talk about how we would mock this. So here's Makun, very simple to use and uh, very simple to approach and sophisticated when you need it to be sophisticated. So let's say we're doing this call to the public URL, but when we're using Makun, our server has to be local. Right? Basically saying, hey, instead of uh, that public URL, use this new one. So let's see uh, some call it demo. Nothing in here. So let's get this endpoint public crocodiles. Okay. And we'll say any get request going to public crocodiles path. Let it give me uh, just these two. Uh, let's see, this is array of two objects. And then that this, otherwise JSON complaints. All right, so anytime we hit this, we want to get two crocodiles instead of eight. Uh, this one, Let's see what it's saying. In the request, what did it say? Oh, because it didn't start our server. Start your server. We hit the local host and we get from what we get from Mark. Uh, one other feature of it that I like. So here at the settings, we can change the port, but it always has to be on local host. And there are other features with certificates and whatnot that if we need them. So usually these complicated things, they are addressed in a graceful manner. Uh, so this other feature, let's say you haven't defined everything in the routes. And then if your client, your API client makes a request, uh, you want that call to be proxy to the real API. So for instance, right now we only have public crocodiles. If we get crocodile one, it would have to reach through the real thing, proxy that call. So if you go to logs, we'll see that this call is proxy. All right. So expand this a little bit maybe. No, that's it. Okay, here we go. So that call got proxy. Okay. And then the other cool thing I liked is okay, we're proxying, but now all these logs, we can say, hey, record this one. So every time we hit this one here, we start the server. Even when we're not proxy, since we recorded it once, it's going to now use this. All right, and then if I edit the sex to be female, for instance, 
I hit that again. Sex is gonna come. That's female, right? Now, you can record it, you can edit it, and you can actually record everything that's happening, right? So you enable the proxy, and then you go to logs. Let's clear these. And we can tell it, hey, record everything that's happening. So now if we log in, it's going to record that. If we get a refresh token, it's going to record that. If we get all the authenticated crocodiles, it's going to record all that. So everything that happened, those are all recorded. Right? If I disable the proxy and I stop recording, okay, and make these calls, next time they happen, they're all fully marked against local host 3000. So coming to the climax. The tool doesn't matter, API e 2 all. So, and we can do recording. And um, but also, by the way, you can have an open API spec and then get those endpoints from there. But if it's complex, like if there are uh, seeded references over references, it's not very good with that. And there's quite a bit of documentation on the limitations and everything. Uh, so that's good, but I think the killer feature is the recording capability, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete everything, okay? And instead of having Cypress start on the dev deployment or like the production deployment, I have another config file here. So I have my favorite kind of configuration. So base stuff, common stuff in the base, all the plugins, tasks, everything's there. Dev is using the real deployment. Local is using the local OS 3000. Okay. So when I start with this config file, it's going to uh, be hitting the Mach server. Right. So what I'm going to do then again, proxy to the real thing and then record, delete all these and record everything and start the server. Right. Just nothing. So when I run a Cypress test, the hope is that it records everything. So we'll see. Of course, you have to be careful. For instance, I'm using data session, right? So I want to record the initial execution. I don't want to record the subsequent execution where I'm skipping the token acquisition because I want everything. So you need to be aware of what you're doing. And the more complex uh, your test is, uh, the more things you have to watch out for. So this is great. Like I, I made the most complex API E2E. Now let's see if we can deal with it. So it's the first time session. It's registering the user. And then here, hopefully, we see some yeah, user register coming. OK, create crocodile. So you see the calls happening and Makun capturing them. Everything's getting proxy. Right? So it's using local, but it's, since local has none of those things, everything getting proxy. So we have recorded it. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say no more proxy for you. No more recording for you. We start the server. Now use, reuse all these. So let's see what happens. La 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 la. Okay. So it updates the crocodile. It gets a response, right? It patches the crocodile, just a name, calls it Big Bertha Batch, patch, and then it gets that crocodile to make sure, but it's getting the original response. Why is that? Because this get response to that crocodile is always going to be the same thing, right? So now this is when you start to get, uh, you have to start adding these rules and rules are quite capable. So there's rules and then there's what you do on subsequent responses. So first response, okay, do that same thing. Second response is also, by the way, um, the same exact response because that's an update. And let's just look at the test real quick. So first, get my crocodile. It's a generic check. When you do the edited crocodile, it uh, again dynamically uh, generates it. So the first thing you have to realize is when you do a local testing and you're creating these dynamic values, well, for local testing, you might want fixed values, right? So here with that generator factory, it's using Faker on every deployment. But when you're local, for these dynamic tests, so you have some less headache, you want to stick to as fixed variables as you can, right? So the second call is again, uh, generating basically the same thing, the fixed value. And it's checking that there's an ID and there's a age, 
in a generic way. But the third one is patching it up. So in that third call, response three, we're gonna have to say, okay, the name, that's gonna have to be something different so that our test passes. So we can edit this nicely right here. All right, I pass that. And then the get request after the patch should be fine. And finally, we patch it. What happened here? Uh, did we restart the server? Okay, that's response three. Okay, okay, run this again. All right. So this this should come, the third call should come as the Bertha patch. Let's double check this. Response one. Oh, what happened? Oh no. Okay. Response one, response two, response. Three. Uh -huh. Okay, so now these responses, right? Uh, you have to specify how you want these responses. So you can make them random, or you can say sequence. I kind of wish this was default because this is like what I get from it. But once you spe specify that, right? All the rules, like if you had any rules, they won't be there. So I think the way I would use rules is like if body is something, query string is something then use the like uh, response to or uh, something like that. I think I'm going to look further into it. I'm not fully through the documentation, but for my case right now, I want sequential. Like right? for response one, give me this. Response two, give me this. Response three, give me big Bertha patch. So let's try that. Get past that. Right, okay, perfect. We got past that. So when we delete it and we do another call to get the my crocodiles, so get my crocodiles, right? Like the beginning one that we do. After creating it, we record that, we find that crocodile there. And well, when we call it again, it's the same response, right? So again, we have to do some uh, playing around with that one. So we can't have it give the same response in the second time. In the second time, you know, we will have to, I think it's quoting by name. So either we can change the name No name for you. All right, let's do that. And you can make sure that it goes through it and can't find anything. So, and we can keep that, with that one button. Let's see. Let's see if I show. Okay. And one is that. So, one, two is that. And we are looking for it by crocodile name that it shouldn't exist. Right? We did that. And what is this one? Get my crocodiles. It should be fine. Second response, no name for you. Yeah, this should be fine. Let's see. Hmm. What am I missing? What if what happens if I just fully remove it? Because at the end it's deleted, right? So it's not fine. Anything. Ah, empty array. Oh no, we don't want that. So you want your second response. Empty array. Sequential. Yeah, maybe I have to restart it. It doesn't always, it usually tells you if you have to restart something, but just to be safe, just stop and restart, right? Yeah, that's the gist. So, takeaways dynamic data is tricky when you're doing local testing, you know, abstract these factories away. And then if your local try to use fixed data, um, when you're making back to back calls, you might have to change the rules a little bit because different things have happened in the test. Uh, so that might be important. Um, the other cool thing I like, feature wise, so we can save that recording as a JSON file. So here I put it in Makun CRUD JSON. I saved it there. So that's a source of truth that you check into the repository. And then you install the Makun CLI. And then you can call the Markun CLI to use that JSON file at a certain port. You can also use multiple JSON files, but each one has to use a different port, I think. Um, so far, maybe they can share the port or you can put all that stuff in the same JSON file. So at that point, you can just, let's say you don't even have Markun, 
but the person just installs this repository, right? They just go yarn, mark server, so everything's local. And then yarn star run local, right? And I just recorded one test that should take care of the login and register. Uh, you know, you would just make sure that you record everything and then use it that way. But uh, for the most part, this will be fine. I guess Let's see, start that. Anyway, so here is the full PR. And you can scrutinize it, take a look, and see all the changes that have to happen to make it happen. A little bit of readme describing what's going on. And I'll share the link over here. Uh, but other than that, yeah, a huge unlock. Now we can fully mock out side request. So that's going to be excellent. That's it. Later. Oh, by the way, um, the, the PR, the YAML and stuff. So every Every PR is going to run both against dev and and um, and my bird and um, local and so usually you wouldn't run against dev when you're doing a PR, but you can see like the dev took a minute and a half and it does the regular run towards that user. and the local one is running against the local euro right and um, if you look at the YAML file, you can see okay, for, for the dev deployment after it's merged, it's just running against dev. And I, I call dev like the public URL. Uh, but then when it's PR level, uh, it runs against the local. Only difference being the config file is different. And then you start the mock server before you start running it. Uh, so the full solution is here. Uh, there's a lot more in the documentation. I've only been through like five docs. Uh, use the one for CLI, the one for uh, proxy was quite interesting, um, but so far so good. I just it, the examples are usually very trivial, so I wanted to make sure things work in like a sophisticated, uh, close to work sort of uh, example. So this is it. That's all. Later.